So approximately eight years ago, uh, NVIDIA came out with a GPU and it kind of blew the doors away on anything that came before it. And uh, I don't disagree with, uh, with that assessment. As a matter of fact, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of people that feel that it was the greatest GPU of all time. So the GOAT, right? And so because of that, I went out of my way to find one and uh, to secure it. Uh, whether I use it or not moving forward in a build, probably not. I wanted it just because I wanted it, because it's, it's considered the GOAT. So, all right, so I'm going to unbox this thing and show it to you and kind of talk my way through uh, what my plan is. All right. All right, so nice and sealed. Here's the original cable, it looks like, because it's got green in it. So there's that. And there we go. And here it is. Uh, the 1080 Ti. And it's in it's in really great condition. It it looks practically new. And so look how I mean, look how clean this thing looks. No scratches, no dents, not even any wear on on the contact. And yeah, it it looks practically new. And and I took the opportunity to uh look up the the numbers on here and it looks like that this thing is an original meaning that this did not get produced by someone like gigabyte or pny or anybody like that uh, this was a card that came out straight from nvidia it looks like uh, there's no other markings on it and according to uh, again the numbers that are on here this is an original nvidia and you'd think that it would cost uh, at least a couple hundred dollars to get something like this, especially in the shape that it's in. I didn't really look online for something equally immaculate, but uh, the average prices were actually ranging from 180 to 220, somewhere around there. And this was looking on eBay and Mercari and Jawa and things like that. Jawa didn't really have anything. Uh, Jawa had a, some uh, built PCs with the 1080 Ti in it, and it uh, wasn't necessarily the Founders Edition. Uh, and I'm a, I'm, I gotta tell you, I'm a fan of the Founders Edition cards, uh, regardless of what other people think or feel about those cards versus uh, the takes that someone like uh, MSI or ASUS or anybody else puts on those reference cards. Uh, I have a preference towards the Founders Edition cards. Uh, one, because uh, they're, they're just as good uh, from a performance standpoint as maybe a little bit lighter, uh, but not enough to uh, actually tell the difference in a game. And at the same time, the, the Founders Edition cards historically have always been sold at MSRP, whereas, uh, you know, when when the other AIBs, uh, add-in board companies, put theirs out, their versions out, there's usually a premium that you gotta pay uh, above it. Uh, does it. Do they do a little bit better in cooling? Eh, maybe so, sometimes. Uh, do they do a little bit better in performance? Maybe sometimes, yeah. Uh, but again, it, not enough for me to say pay an extra two to four hundred dollars of premium for for an upper end card so yeah that being said what i want to do is i want to build a test bench for this and uh, put it to the test check out the thermals and its performance and see how it holds up in 2024 
I, I, I want to I figure that part out. I might have to repaste it considering the age. I mean, it's, it's eight years or more since this card got put out. So the thermal paste might be kind of brittle or, or uh, it, it doesn't look like this card was used a lot, if at all. Uh, so I, I'm not concerned with it being uh, overheated or anything or performance issues from uh, from what it was when it first came out. I don't think that I'm going to have a problem with that, but I am a little bit concerned with thermal paste. Uh, and so my plan is to bench it and test it in some games, see whether, where the temperatures are, and if, if necessary, then uh, probably... Uh, do a repaste on it after the repaste. We'll test that again and see that if the thermals uh, got helps and again test that out on some games and figure out uh, how it performs. All right, uh, so I'll be right back and we'll get to building the bench and putting this thing on there. Okay, and so what I'm going to do to test this out is I got a really good deal. Uh, on Facebook Marketplace for a 7800X3D. Believe it or not, in today's market, I, I just bought it like maybe about a week ago, I think. And in today's market, it's currently brand new, priced at about 400, 420, somewhere around there. And on the used market, it's not much different on the price. Uh, some of that has to do with uh, uh, the recent problems AMD had with their rollout of the 9000 series. And so the 7800X3D, which was selling for about like 320, 330 uh, on, on the new market is now way up there. And on the used market, it's probably selling around like 350 and up. And I got this one for $260 and it was practically unused apparently. Uh, the owner of it wanted to originally put this on there, but decided to go with uh, a, an Intel platform instead. And so it had been sitting there uh, for weeks. It, it was, it had been, he had listed it a while ago for uh, 300 and change. I think it was for like 19 weeks it was on, uh, on the market. Nobody was, nobody was doing anything with them on it. And so I made an offer and he accepted. He brought it by, I tested it, worked great. All right, so 7800X3D, and I wanna use this uh, CPU so that it's not CPU bound uh, with this card when I test it, all right? So we're gonna do a pure, pure performance uh, test on, on the 1080 Ti. All right, so there's that. Uh, I went with, uh, uh, 32 gigs of RAM. I had some uh, white RAM sitting around doing nothing. And this is a 6,000 megahertz, so that should be more than ample. Uh, and then I've got a 650 watt power supply, another white one because I was planning on doing a white build, uh, but I'm kind of holding off on that white build, wait until like Christmas time to do that and put it on Facebook Marketplace. So I've got this 650 watt power spec. Uh, I've also got this uh, MSI Mag B650 board. Uh, it's Tomahawk with Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna use that as the uh, test board. Uh, and then for the cooler, a goat deserves a goat. And Thermalite's uh, Peerless Assassin 120 is if it's not the goat, it's pretty, it's pretty close to it. So uh, we're going to go with the Peerless Assassin. All right, so we're going to get to building this. Oh, and I also have a Crucial P3 in here. Uh, one terabyte drive. This is an enclosure. Uh, and if, if you don't know what an enclosure is, then uh, write down in the comments below that uh, you'd like me to do a video on that. I'd be more than happy to. There's plenty of other videos out there for it, but if you want to see one from me and showing you what an enclosure is, what it does, and what you can do with it, then uh, let me know down in the comments and we'll figure that part out. All right, uh, I'll do a video. I'd be more than happy to do a video for that. All right, 
anyways, so that's what we're going with. That's just, that's going to be our, our test bench. And so let's get to building. All right, so there's the there's the bench. I'm not hooking up the RGB for the fans because I don't need it. Uh, I'm just doing what's necessary. Next step is to hook up a monitor, a keyboard, and a mouse, and see how it goes. All right, so I'll be right back. And there it is. Gonna start up uh, Cyberpunk. For some reason, Game Capture and uh, Windows Capture isn't working, so I gotta figure that out. And I don't want to have to fuck around too much longer with getting everything set up. So with that in mind, on Display Capture, uh, the FPS is probably gonna be somewhere around like between five to 10% lower than what the reality is uh, and doing the display capture thing. So it's gonna take up some resources. All right, so just to, just so you guys know. Custom. Hi, video, we're at uh, 1080p. All right, so at 1080p on high settings. Looks like, uh, let me call my car. Looks like we're at about somewhere between the high 50s to high 60s FPS. Where's my car? That one looks good. Get out of my fucking car. Uh, oh, oh, I can't control cars very well. All right, so at high settings, it's uh, it's pretty respectable. I mean, I'm at above 50 FPS at high settings. I mean, I'm not. I haven't seen my temperatures get much above 70.
So, yeah. Doing okay there. Alright, so let's try something else. It's like my max temperature while playing Cyberpunk was 72. Hotspot was 86.8, so that's not bad. And I don't even remember what my settings are. So let's take a look at that. Uh, display. Oh, we're on mediums. So let's do high. All right. So now we're closer to about. Where do you think you're going, pal? So now we're at about like high 40s, 50s. So that means I'm probably closer to about like 50 to 60 FPS right now on Starfield at high settings with uh, with the 1080 Ti. Still a high of 72 on the GPU and 86.8 on on the hotspot, so actually pretty good. I don't even know if I, I I would need to repaste this. Let's do something a little bit more radical. Let's do the superposition, and let's do. Well, I mean, let's try. Let's try 4K. This is a uh, Unigen's uh, superposition. And we're going to try, we're going to run the bench at 4K, see what happens. All right, pretty respectable score, average 64.5 FPS. Okay, now it's benchmarking. All right, so let's see what happens here. All right, average FPS of 196.7 with a max of 421. And this was this was in the ultra quality with extreme tessellation. I mean, how can you, how can you, how can you ask for more than that? The hotspot uh, didn't go much above uh, what I had it already at uh, with Cyberpunk, uh, which is 86.9 instead of 86.8. Uh, 72 was the high for the GPU overall. All right, so there you have it. I mean, that's, we did pretty good. I mean, the, the max GPU temperature after all that benchmarking, uh, I did heaven and superposition. Uh, I did uh, Starfield and Cyberpunk. Uh, so the max temperature Overall for the GPU was uh, 72 degrees. The max hotspot was 86.9, which is well within range. Uh, so, yeah, I'm I'm uh, pretty pretty happy with it. Now, to be to be fair, it is an open bench, right? So, um, when when you put something like this system in a case where airflow is not as great as open air, and uh, I mean, the temperature right now is set at 73 degrees uh, in, in this room. I mean, it's an eight year old card. I'm, you, you would think that, you know, current gen games would, would overwhelm this GPU, but this is why uh, so many people consider this uh, a goat for a card and I do as well as a matter of fact 
I don't even plan on using this card much after this. Uh, I, I got it more as a kind of a, a, a conversational piece and a bragging rights kind of thing. I don't think very many people on the planet right now has a 1080 Ti that's in near immaculate condition that's originally from NVIDIA. And I got it for 160 bucks. So, how? It's pretty good. I mean, this this card is outperforming some current gen cards. So you know, I I'm I'm really happy with it. So hopefully you, you learn that uh, you don't have to spend a crap ton of money on a GPU. You could get an older GPU, and with the right platform, it can still perform really well. Uh, that's not to say you shouldn't get new gen stuff. You can. There's nothing wrong with that. But you can also look at some older gen cards and see how those perform. Uh, granted, this is a 1080 Ti, a GOAT card. So, you know, if you get something like a 2060 or, or a 3056 gig or something like that, it's definitely not going to perform as well. Uh, 1080 Ti is kind of around the same region or I want to say around the 3070 to 3070 Ti. It's also uh, pretty close to the 4060 in performance. So yeah, I mean, all things considered, if you end up paying like close to 300 bucks for a 4060 or uh, a 3070 or a 3070 Ti, I think it's going for like 200 to 300 bucks, somewhere around there. Uh, and I paid 160 for this. So there you have it. All right, so hopefully uh, you enjoyed some of the stuff I had to show you with uh, this kind of thing. And if you, if you like this kind of thing where I'm doing some benchmarks and testing out some older cards and things like that, uh, feel free to uh, hit like and subscribe for me and let me know that uh, you want to uh, see more of this kind of stuff. Write down in the comments, let me know what you think about the 1080 Ti versus other cards, even the cards that you have. And uh, yeah, let's have a conversation. Let's talk down in the comments. All right, I'll see you over there.